Hi, I'm Sarah Lowater. I'm one of your hosts here on the Brave Single Mom podcast. I am a nutrition coach, a personal trainer, and a hypnotherapist. If you want more information about me and what I do, you can find me on Instagram at sa.rah.beth. All the links are in the show notes, by the way. Hey, I'm Amanda Carroll. I'm the other host of the Brave Single Moms podcast. What do I do? I help single moms. <laughs> I help single moms with online courses, this podcast. There's lots of ways to contact me. You can get my free top 10 essentials to become a successful single mom. All the links are in the show notes, and we are so glad you're here. So Sarah, you've been without your kids for a full month this summer, and I, I know it was hard for you. She it's, came over a couple times. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually, I'm so glad we're talking about this today because it's uh-huh. something, you know, I've been a single mom for 11 years now. This is my 11th summer where half the summer, for a full half of the oh. summer, my kids are gone the whole entire month. Sometimes it's the whole month of June. This year it was the whole month of July. And um, this year has been exceptionally difficult for me, you know. Uh, I think we're constantly learning about ourselves. um, And you think you've learned everything there is to learn about what it feels like to have your kids gone for a month. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, 11 years later, you're like, oh, there's something else in here. I see. (laughs) Um, So definitely have been struggling with it a little bit. And what I found is, you know, after, after all COVID craziness happened um yeah my close circle of friends most of them moved away yeah and so this is the first summer where my friends had moved away Mm. uh i'm single single so not in a relationship my kids are gone for an entire month i just moved so i'm in a new neighborhood and in a new house and um everything just felt so different. Isn't it so quiet? Like deafeningly quiet. Yeah. Yes. And because I'm in a new house, like we just moved into this house end of June, right? So I feel like I'm alone in a stranger's home because it doesn't feel like home yet. Um, And what I found about my, what I learned about myself is that uh, I don't, I don't really, I don't really do alone very well. And so I've really you worked. Can. <laughs> yes, yes. And, but I didn't just like yeah. accept that and throw my arms up, right? So I, I've really worked this month to say, okay, like, let's take a, a good long look at, at what we're looking at here. And how can I better kind of navigate the way that I feel in, in this so that this OMO time, alone time yeah. isn't spent, you know, swallowing. Yeah, sad. Or like, doing, sad. I think the other risk is I I went through the same thing with my kids. I've been in so many different custody <laughs> arrangements because of our situation. But um, for a long time, their dad lived in another state. Mm-hmm. He lived in Texas. We're here in California. And they would go for six weeks. So, so I had hard. them all the time. And they were little. I had them all year long. And then they'd go for six weeks this summer. So I went from all in, completely exhausted doing everything on my own to six weeks of silence. Yeah. So so what do you do with the six weeks of silence? I learned the hard way. I always say I'm the cautionary tale (laughs) for single moms. We all learn the hard way. (laughs) It can be really dangerous. And you can get yourself into a lot of situations because you're trying to distract yourself from being alone that's unhealthy. Mm -hmm. There's, There's one thing about planning things that are good for you to do as a distraction and there's going out and dating a bunch of people and doing things and hanging out with people that you have no business hanging out with that are going to end up breaking your heart. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to be really careful and you have to be really strategic about how do you handle your alone time when your kids are gone. Even if it's just an every other weekend situation, it's really important to plan ahead, have a plan, have something you're thinking about. Now you were talking about, did you fill yourself up with distractions? So yeah, and I think this is a really great point is, Mm -hmm. you know, distractions are, you just, it was the question is, is this a toxic distraction or a sweet distraction? Like, am I drinking, that's good. Am I drinking poison right now? Right. (laughs) Um, Just to, just to fill this, like, to avoid this feeling of, of alone. Um, And 
And no, the answer was no. I really stayed aware of it. I really stayed in front of it. I had some healthy distractions um, where, you know, I, you know, went on a couple of trips. I went to your house a few nights. (laughs) Uh, I think what makes this really strange is that um, it's not just your kids are gone right, for, yeah. for an entire month or in your case, six weeks, or maybe it's every other week for some of our listeners, whatever your summer schedule looks like. But it's also that your routine is gone, right? Yeah. So the whole rest of the year, I've got kids to take to school, kids to pick up from school. I'm cooking somebody dinner. We've got grocery shop, all the, everything, right? Yep. And it, it all, like, while it's a lot and it's heavy, it's very routine. And as humans, we really do thrive and become our best selves when we have some sort of structure. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that was completely removed. I work from home. Uh, me too. So, it's so hard. I know. Yeah. I think that's what really adds to the loneliness. Yes, because yeah. because then the, what I found was like there were days this month where I'm like, man, I haven't seen seen another person. Human. Yeah. In 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 days, like mm-hmm. I have to get out of this house. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I did fill it not with anything toxic. So very proud of myself. I didn't do any dating. I didn't do any um, reconnecting with with maybe people who I've I've phased yeah. out of my hey, life. Hey, what's she doing? <laughs> yeah, like nothing like Hi, that. Hey, you're just checking in. Um, <laughs> but where I did grow my my skill and myself in that personal development was in finding peace in that alone time. And I think that that's the first strategy is like embracing it and celebrating it instead of feeling sad, right? Like. Our mind and our mindset plays such a big role into everything that we do, and perception is key. And so I changed my perception from I feel sad to this is an opportunity for me to grow and be with myself. And so I did things I never do, like I took a bath. A few of them. I have a beautiful bathtub and I never use it. You just don't. Right. (laughs) Right. 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 I never use my bathtub, right? I lit some candles and I played some soft music. I think I I saw you post on the Instagram. I did. I did. I was very proud of this bath. Um, And I've taken a few of them. And I, uh, you know, I did some more meditation. I picked up a couple of books. I put a jigsaw puzzle out on my kitchen table. I haven't done a jigsaw puzzle. Are you a grandma? Oh, my gosh. Sorry, Some people might think so. Know, you should fun. see my. Uh, it's funny because my daughter gives me gives me a, a hard time. Um, she's fifteen, as I've mentioned before. And on my bed, my you know the the afghan that sits on yeah. the end of the bed. It's like a knitted, like burnt orange color. Oh, like and she that. well, I like it too. Yeah. But she always tells me that my style is. Um, um, granny with a dash of hippie. <laughs> granny with I got old lady chic. That's okay. what my daughter calls okay, my same, style. Same it's like old lady chic. Okay, <laughs> yeah. we digress. We digress. <laughs> so, well, I think what that's what I why when I first became a single mom, I came up with this hashtag OMO, mm-hmm. and it it was like a rebranding of alone. <laughs> it was like, okay, I I'm alone. I'm alone. I'm alone. No, I'm not. I'm OMO. Mm-hmm. And I, this was a 10, 12 years ago when yeah. it started. And I started posting pictures and hashtagging OMO of stuff I was doing. And it started with, I, so I was planning healthy distractions. Mm-hmm. You can get yourself involved in um, last minute unhealthy. Let's just say it like booty calls, right. hanging out, drinking going the poison, out on dates, the drinking the poison. Like that, that's not going, that's going to make you feel more alone the next day. Yes, it might make now distracted, distracted, but it will make tomorrow worse. Yeah. Trust us. Tr- use me as your cautionary tale. I made all the mistakes. So I started rebranding. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this negative cycle. So I said, I'm OMO time. So, you know, after work, I'd go get a manicure. I'd go get a pedicure and call that. That's my OMO time. Mm-hmm. Or do something for myself. Or I would go on a hike. I love to hike. Yeah. And it was felt... Each little OMO, it was like I stepped up to bigger things. Absolutely. You know, one, it was just a day at the nail salon. Mm-hmm. And then I was doing things like going out to dinner by myself. And mm-hmm. I was going out to a hike by myself. And then I gradually got strength every time. I was like, oh, that didn't feel that bad going out to dinner at myself. So it was actually maybe kind of nice. It was kind of nice. And then I felt empowered as I kept OMOing it. 
And so then I ended up going even for a week away Mm -hmm. by myself, like on my own vacation. Isn't that amazing? Eventually that, and it was wonderful. Yeah. Because I did exactly what I wanted, something I was so afraid of. So maybe if you think about if there's there's something on your list of things, wow, I'd really want to do that, but I don't know if I can. I'm afraid to do it. That's the thing that probably should be your OMO. Just do it scared. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it's okay to be afraid. It's okay to be nervous. That's we, when you get brave. Yeah, you know, it, it's when you get brave is, is you embrace the unknown. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll nerd out a little bit on our subconscious mind. As a mm-hmm. hypnotherapist, I, I really Ooh. go deep with the subconscious. But, you know, our subconscious associates everything that's known to pleasure and everything that's unknown to pain. And this is why the unknown is associated mm. so deeply to fear. And fear is just an emotion. It doesn't control you. You get, you still get to make the choices um, and you can make those choices consciously because fear is just an emotion and bravery is a choice. Yep. And you choose it every single day. And I truly believe you're the expert here, but one act of bravery, it, it it's contagious mm-hmm. in your life because you realize that you're like, wait a second, that worked out. Yep. I can do bigger things. So what you start to do, if you if you look at your mind, and I'll, I'll make this brief, but if you look at your mind like a like a nightclub. Uh, all the people that are in this nightclub are 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 the knowns, right? Mm-hmm. They are this deep in your subconscious. These are the behaviors. These are the things that are familiar, and your you, what what allows these knowns and unknowns to be changed is this bodyguard at the door, and they don't let anybody in that they don't oh, know. Yeah. So all these new experiences coming in, like if we can't associate it to something that is known, it never it that is that is known or unknown, it can never shift in our subconscious. But like to your point, when you start to take the baby steps and become more empowered to take bigger steps into bigger steps, what's actually happening in your mind is you're creating evidence for yourself yes. that that fear is just an emotion and when you have that evidence then then there's it becomes it goes from an unknown to a known and instead of being like I don't know if I can do this you're you automatically even maybe not consciously think well but I've done this this and this in the past and it was amazing and I bet this will be too thank you I didn't expect to go that is awesome (laughs) I need that so other ways that you can deal with loneliness as a single mom, whether your kids leave for a big chunk of time or it's just every other weekend. I think one of the second strategies that I implemented when they were gone for six weeks is I picked a project, mm-hmm. picked something that you want to work on. Even if it's every other weekend, like maybe you had a side gig. You know, you're like, hey, I want to start this online business. Mm -hmm. So on the weekends, I don't want my kids. That's the project that I'm going to work on. So you're doing something to propel yourself forward. You're not kind of wasting the time away. Mm -hmm. And so each summer, I would pick something major. Like it started with, I'm going to go on a vacation by myself. And then one summer it was, this summer I'm going to buy a house. Mm -hmm. So they were gone one summer. And I had saved for six years. We had lived very, very simply. And I saved and saved and saved so I could get this down payment for a house. And they knew it. It would be like, Mom, can we go to In-N-Out? It'd be like, sure, we can go to In-N-Out. Or we could also put the money to buy a house. (laughs) And they're like, okay, we want the house. Because I'm like, we're going to, I want a house on a cul-de-sac with a pool. This is what we're doing. And so I had saved up the money. So they went to their dads. And I did all the house hunting stuff and found a house. And they came home. I picked them up at the airport to their, and I surprised them and drove them home to our new house with a pool. So I could just like, it was. That's such an incredible, yes. It was one of, and, and I don't want you to feel like that's a far off thing. If you're thinking, Amanda, Sarah, like you have no idea what my situation is right now. Like we know, like mm-hmm. I've been there. I, I only had a part-time job when my ex left and it was like nothing. It was just Same. fun money. Same. And if we can build ourselves up to become financially independent and then plan and eventually add side gigs, add online businesses, both of us have like two or three gigs. And if we can do that, you can too. Mm-hmm. And that's what Brave Single Moms is all about. Is so, And if you just pick one project every other weekend, just do one. Don't get overwhelmed by the whole thing. 
eventually you'll get there. Yeah. Time's going to the pass big anyway, project. right? Mm-hmm. Time's going to pass right. anyway. And when it does, you can look back and say, man, I wish I would have started. Or you can say, wow, look at the progress I've made. Yeah. I think that the key with doing and starting these projects and something that's really important to remember, because I know it's, it's I've fallen into it myself. Remember that as humans, we like to wallow. Oh, Mm -hmm. sad and lonely and that feeling of misery. And we like to wallow because what happens is um, we just want to kind of sit in it and stew in it. And bring Um, other people into it. And bring other people (laughs) into it. And then, and then... It's, it's hard to almost, sometimes can be hard to find the motivation. So you have the, these projects become fantasies, like mental fantasies, yeah. but we don't, because we're wallowing and we're really like embracing the yuck feeling, yeah. we, um, we, we really have a hard time stepping into the motivation to create the reality from the fantasy. Um, so I think that your example of buying a house is a beautiful one because... Um, the, the feeling that we can also become very addicted to is excitement. Like, look at people who are, like, jumping out of airplanes and bungee jumping or, oh, you know, feel yeah. remember what it feels like to be a kid on Christmas morning. Like, excitement is just as, addic- as addicting. And so when, when we're thinking of a project, I think it's really important to let yourself fantasize, let yourself feel the emotions, ask yourself the questions of, you know, how would I start this? What would it mean for my life if I started this? What, would it, what does the end game look like if ideally in a perfect world, how do I want this to look in, when it's over and allow your body to physically feel the excitement as if you've already accomplished it and yep. it's that excitement that's going to offset the lonely, lonely sad not wanting to do anything feeling that brings me to our third strategy you walk me right into it <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> me camp oh yes i want you to plan a me camp i learned this from one of my favorite authors so me camp, this is a time that you set aside. Maybe you go to a friend's cabin or maybe you just do this at home and you are strategically planning your future. But you're just kind of, you're using this alone time to work on your future self. Mm. So you're doing that and you're every morning, you're writing in your journal, you're, lit- you're getting away as a personal retreat mm-hmm. to kind of assess your situation. Okay. <laughs> How do I conquer this loneliness? Okay, I never expected to, I could just cry, I never expected to be a single mom. Now, what the hell do I do? Because, you know, what the hell do I do? Instead of living in what the hell do I do mode, start going, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And you sit down and you just say, who do I want? We have a previous episode that talks about a letter to your future self. Go listen to that episode. It's beautiful. Who do I want to be in five years? Who do I want to be in 10 years? What is it going to take for me to get there? Mm-hmm. And then write it backwards. Mm-hmm. And then just do one thing at a time. Yeah. So your me camp is retreating, resting, finding a book that you need to end that will teach you how to do this, you know, listening to a bunch of podcasts, getting an online course, all these different things. You're like, okay, I am going to recreate, I'm going to rebrand me. And I think that this is really beautiful because it can be as big as you want it to be. So, you know, when mm-hmm. you're like, who do I want to be? Where do I want to be in 5, 10, 15 years, yeah. in a year, in two years, whatever it is, however far you're looking, I think it's important to remember that it's not just what you want your life to look like, but how you want to feel and who you want to be inside of your own person yes. outside of just I'm a mom, right? Who are you? We have another episode about this as well. Um, and so, you know, how do I want to feel physically and emotionally? How, you know, what, wh- who do I, where do I want to be with my physical body? Where do I want to be financially? Where do I want to be where my kids and I want to be in, in, from in terms of life experience? Yeah. Um, and so all of these things really play into this. And, you know, you really touched, there are so many resources. We live in the day of technology, right? So yeah. there's so many resources from books to podcasts to online courses. And, and if I could give you one piece of advice, that changed the I mean we're giving you lots of pieces of advice here but I'll give you another one that really changed the trajectory of my life um and now I could cry Um, what's going on with us is is very much the catalyst for how I was able to build everything I have and accomplish what I didn't even dream of because it was a dream so big I couldn't even comprehend it back then yeah um hire a coach 
Yeah. And, and if you can't afford a coach, find one who will work with you financially. Tra- um, trade services or, or trade something. Trade services yeah. or, or so so coaching in this day of technology is available everywhere and whether that is a coach yeah. for your physical body whether it's a life coach whether it's a business coach whatever your goal is in this world like hire a coach find community find support and and don't do it alone we're here yeah. you know we're here and and there's so many others out there just like us that are here to help and so that that really changed my life um and and let me see a path that i didn't even know was available to me mm-hmm. um and, and reach out to us we, we can be the ones that will be there for you or point you in the direction mm-hmm. of somebody who can if you're looking for something outside of the scope of what we do um yeah. but it's it's truly life-changing when when you decide that you're not going to go at this alone and you decide that you're going to be the creator of your dreams we create our reality Yep. And any reality you want to exist for you can be true. Yeah. yeah. It just happens by not wallowing and, and doing one brave thing a day. <laughs> one, yeah. And and not attaching yourself to the how. Right. So the other piece of advice I'll give you is is talk about it. Once you write that letter to yourself, once you find have the plan of your life in five years and 10 years and one year, whatever it is, tell people about it. Not yeah. this is what I hope is going to happen, but like you are so sure it's going to happen like it is already written in the stars hey in five years from now i'm going to live in that neighborhood Mm -hmm. i'm going to have a house in that neighborhood Mm -hmm. i'm going to own my own business in five Mm -hmm. years from now so you know talk about it with such confidence and and be so sure because that's how we create those dreams become realities is you know your body doesn't know the difference between real and fake it just hears your words and and our body is what's taking us in action through this world and and so talk about it tell everybody about yeah. it. tell us tell us yes seriously <laughs> we love to hear from you tell us we have this phone number that you can call to leave us a message ask us any questions sometimes i answer it because it rings directly to my cell phone it's 5304 amanda i set it up for me but i'll put the link to the or i'll put the number in the show notes Ask us anything. Tell us what you're going to do with me, Camp. Tell us what your vision for your life is. And if you want one-on-one coaching, again, if you want training and hypnosis, Sarah's your girl. If you're like, I want to write my vision and my mission, and I want to learn how to be financially independent, I can help you with that. All the links are in the show notes. So we got a question. Can we go to our little question and answer time? This is Daisy. So I'm going to play it. I hope you can hear Daisy's question. If it works. Hi, ladies. I was hoping to get some advice or some insight on how to stop feeling so guilty from moving on from our uh, kids as fathers. How to allow love that we clearly deserve from someone who isn't them. Um, And also how to stop feeling guilty um, or having that mom guilt for not being able to keep the family together or feeling guilty for not having one home for our kids. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daisy. You want to take that? (sighs) Yeah. Oh, boy, Daisy. That is an incredible Mm -hmm. question and one I know that we have all felt in some way or another. And um, I know I did myself. And so I will tell you it was was a process to find that. Um, But where I came, where I landed was... I want my kids to have two happy homes instead of one where they're watching their mom be miserable. Mm -hmm. When I was in that relationship, I was not the best mom I could be. I was not the best version of myself I could be. And I think looking back, I would feel more guilty if I looked back on their their childhoods and realized that that was the only version of me they ever saw and ever got to have because I stayed for that. Um, whereas now I can look mm-hmm. back and be proud that they saw their mom be strong enough to go after what she knows she deserves and to and to leave a situation where she wasn't happy. Um, you know, I, I, yeah. I, 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 just to add a little bit to it, I, I'll say that there's a, a fine line with, you know, and I, I know we could probably have a whole episode about this, but a fine line with uh, how I talk about that with my kids because um, I, it's very important to me that they have a, a strong relationship with their dad and um, that I'm not poisoning that well. Yeah. 
Um, they love their dad and he loves them. And, and he's, while wasn't a good husband, he's an, a fantastic father. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, I want I want to be honest with my kids, but I also, as they're getting older, I want, I want to be honest, but I also want them to know that that didn't make him a bad person. And so I, yeah. I, you know, moved on from him, but I always tell them, you know, sometimes people just bring out the worst in each other. And That's that a great was, line. That was me and your dad. Yep. He's not mm-hmm. a bad person. And, and there's, there's nobody can take on all of the blame. It takes two in every dynamic and, you know, even, even the abusive ones like mine, where I'm not saying I I deserved the abuse or I'm taking responsibility for it, but I take responsibility for staying for as long as I did. Yeah. You know? And, um, and so I just tell them like, sometimes two people just bring out the worst in each other and you get to have two happy homes instead of one where there's arguing, fighting, tension, right. and your mom is sad. I want to address the one thing she said was about feeling guilty for not giving your son a family. Mm. You are a family. I just oh. want to erase that guilt from you. We actually have an episode about this, so yes. you should go back and listen to that one too. You are a family. Yeah. You are a loving home. Yes. How great that your son has even more family two families and two loving homes. Don't ever, I I will forever um, argue with people that will call a single parent family a broken family or a broken Broken home. home. I will forever say, no, it's not. Because you're a healed home. Staying in a home that was not good for anyone, that's broken. That's brokenness. Yes. But understanding that this is the best situation for you. I mean, get the family photos taken. Call yourself a family. Have family dinners. Have family getaways. And use the word family does this all the time. You know, Lily told me, Lily is my daughter's name. Mm -hmm. I was on the phone with her last night, and she was she wants to go see the Barbie movie when she comes home. They're coming home from their dads tonight, yeah. thank God. But um, <laughs> she wants to go see the Barbie movie when she comes home, and, you know, I, I, we were talking about it, and I told her we could. And she said to me, one of my favorite things about my life um, is when we just, me, you, and Owen, her brother, just go yeah. and do things, the three of us. She's like, sometimes <laughs> other people come, your friends come, or my friends mm-hmm. come, or it's a bigger group. She's like, that's fun too. But when it's just the three of us, we have the best time. And that, if that doesn't make me feel like my home is ho- as whole as it could possibly be. Right. Success. Success. That's all we can ask for. And that's what I know you can create. And that's what we want to help you yeah. create. You know, we've been doing this for 10, 12 years single motherhood. I I don't think there's a situation that we haven't been through yet. (laughs) And we have committed our lives to helping equip other struggling single moms to become strong and courageous women Mm -hmm. and get their brave on too. We would love for you to reach out. Call us, leave your questions, um, check out our websites. If you want some coaching, we would love to be the ones to help you become the successful, strong, courageous single mom that you know is within you. And that's why I always have this little phrase I would love for you to embrace. Just go get your brave on. 